Oh great, sounds boring. As usual, too much information. Wait, I the pencil, economist, lecture gives a simple yet... Simple? What have we found, Emily? We? Sit down, Emerson, and we've found... We need to understand how it is that a free market works to enable millions of people to cooperate peacefully together. I know no better way to bring this out than by a very simple example that I owe to an old friend of mine, Leonard Reed, who once wrote a little article called I the Pencil. I am a pencil, a commonly known implement, yet I, pencil, simple though I appear to be, have a profound lesson to teach. And I can teach this lesson better than a car, an airplane, or computer because I am so seemingly simple. You know, it's a funny thing, he said. There's nobody in the world who knows how to make a pencil. Now, that seems like a silly thing to say, isn't it? This is just the most obvious thing. It's only a piece of wood with a, something black in the middle and a little red tip at the end. What do you mean nobody knows how to make a pencil? Well, suppose you were to start to set out to make a pencil. This isn't a how-to video, is it? First of all, you have to get some wood, don't you? Where do you get the wood? Home Depot. Shh. You have to go to the Pacific Northwest, probably, and cut down some trees. How do you cut down some trees? You have to have some saws to cut it with. Where do you get the saws? You have to have some steel. Where do you get the steel? You have to have a steel mill. So in order to know how to make a pencil, you would have to know everything there is to know about how to start from iron ore and coal and get iron and convert it into saws and cut down trees. But that's only the beginning. This black stuff in the middle that we call lead isn't lead. It's graphite. And I am told it comes from some mines in South America. This little red tip at the top, that's rubber. Where's it come from? Well, the major source of natural rubber is Malaya. That's quite another distance. Except now it's called Malaysia. Call it what you want. Still ends up at Office Max. Correct. Hundreds of people had to work together just to get the raw materials to the manufacturer, then hundreds more had to coordinate to make each one of me. Yet, oddly, there isn't a single one of them, including the president of the pencil company, who contributes more than a tiny bit of know-how. So the difference between the logger in Oregon and the miner in South America is in the type of know-how. And these know-hows naturally, yes, automatically arrange themselves into creative and productive patterns in response to human necessity and demand. Who told that fellow over in Malaya to tap his tree and send a little bit of rubber over here to put at the end of this pencil so I could have a pencil in my hand? Yeah. Who's the mastermind? Maybe the government. No. That's been tried and failed miserably. When the government masterminded production in the Soviet Union, people had to wait in long lines to purchase scarce and shoddy goods. But in the free market, self-interested entrepreneurs freely trading among themselves, each seeking as much profit as possible, managed to make lots of me because they are guided by something called an invisible hand. The invisible hand. What's that? I'm not sure, but if it's invisible, it's probably not the government. That's the miracle of the price system. Because note, these thousands of people who have been led to engage in this simple transaction with me, not one of them has been forced to do it. Nobody has had a gun to his head. They've all done it. Why? Because each one of them thinks he's better off in this transaction. Otherwise, they'd be like, cut down your own trees. There's this terrible tendency, and most economic fallacies derive from that tendency, to think of everything as what the game theorists have come to call a zero-sum game to think there's a fixed pie. And if I get more, you must get less. Many people think that when Bill Gates makes a billion dollars, the rest of us have a billion dollars less. The great insight behind the free market, the great insight of Adam Smith's great book, The Wealth of Nations, was that it is not a zero-sum game. That it is possible for both people to afford to a transaction to benefit. Because by trading, 
They don't divide the pie, they bake whole new ones. So Bill Gates, making a billion dollars, doesn't mean the rest of us have a billion dollars less. Exactly. That wealth earned by some must come at the expense of others. It's very easy to see that principle operating if you think of, of two people, under any circumstances, making a voluntary deal. Hey, if you go buy me a water, I'll give you my notes. Sure. Seems like a fair trade. Fair because both Emily and Emerson get something. All voluntary trade is win-win, not a zero-sum game. The free market can operate without any central direction because all parties enter into a transaction voluntarily. Ergo, it's not a zero-sum game because both parties think they'll be better off, that they'll benefit or they wouldn't make the deal. And finally, the key is what Adam Smith called an invisible hand. The still unsolved mystery. Wait, does that look to you like a hand? You are so corny. Moving on. I, pencil, am a combination of nature's miracles. A tree, zinc, copper, graphite, and so on. But I am a product of human minds. I would not exist without the configuration of creative human energies. Make a note of that, too. I can do it without central direction, thank you. What happens if you or the rest of us want to get some more pencils? Well, the people who are manufacturing pencils suddenly discover that they're making some money. And they say, we better make some more pencils. Nobody has told them about that. They've just discovered it down at the corner drugstore. And they, in turn, send out some orders to people who are uh, making the, uh, producing the wood, to the people who are producing the rubber. Like the pencil said, things automatically arrange themselves. The effect of this is to raise the prices a little all the way down the line for the particular items in demand. And that higher price becomes a signal to people all over the world that there's a greater demand, a greater desire for this particular object. That information is spread. And the only people who have to know about it are the people who are in a position to provide the additional wood or the additional graphite or the additional rubber. Prices aren't just money, they're information. The invisible hand uses the power of prices. The beauty of the price system is that along with this information, and this is the second stage, goes an incentive to act on the basis of it. And that incentive is there because his income is ultimately going to be determined by the prices of the things he sells. Ironically, none of the workers perform their singular tasks because they want me. There are some among this vast multitude who never saw a pencil, nor would they know how to use one. Their motivation is other than me. We need to understand how it is that a free market works to enable millions of people to cooperate peacefully together. I knew there must be a human element. These people who have cooperated with one another don't speak the same language. They're people of all different religions. They may hate one another in every respect, but this hasn't prevented them somehow or other from being led to cooperate together. So in the free market, even people who hate each other may work together. Yeah. No one's hanging out and going to church together. They're just trying to hammer out a decent pencil, pen, or iPod. It hasn't prevented some kind of a wonderful machinery from bringing together these various components all together into this little pencil. What is that machinery? What is it that has induced people to do this? How has it been brought about? That machinery is the price system. That machinery is what the story is all about. That machinery is what enabled the United States to develop as it did. Thank you, Milton Friedman and Adam Smith. Who is this Smith guy anyway? He's only like the Thomas Jefferson of economics. And as a result, the price system enables you to have cooperation among millions of people peacefully, cooperating on one little phase of their life, while each one goes about his own business in respect of everything else. 
so long as it is working, so long as it's operating, so long as it's being, bringing people together, it doesn't even occur to you that it's this kind of a complicated mechanism. It's occurring to me now. I, Pencil, am only one small example of what humans can accomplish through their choices and efforts, without anyone telling them what to do, including a government. More goods and more freedom. Freedom? Free markets, personal freedom, and political freedom. They need each other and lead to the predictable miracle of steadily better ways of life through the price system. Freedom, that's the invisible hand. You think? But the miracle of this pencil isn't that nobody knows how to make it. The miracle of the pencil is how did it get made? I'm an average man. And I am an average woman. One thing about being the average man, leading the primitive life, it gives you plenty of time for thinking. My wife thinks a lot. It's true. Although we're living 10,000 years ago, I do think a lot, but then so does he. Though being average, he only thinks average thoughts. In fact, we're both so average, sometimes we think the same average thoughts, so we don't even bother to speak to each other. Hmm. You know, I could tell you precisely what she's thinking now. She's thinking, what would it be like to move forward 10,000 years in time and live in the 21st century? Oh, <gasps> what's that? Oh. 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 It's a time machine. Oh, oh crikey. Oh. Look at that. Hey. Oh. Hello? Oh. 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 What's that? Oh. Hey, look. What are those? Those things he's holding? They look like square bits of... I, I, I don't know. It, it's all so complicated. What's that? I don't know. Hey, they seem to be doing things. 